glad you're here with me today. Today is a special day. It's the day we get to read a Bible story. So, this one, we're going to start telling the story about Noah and Noah's Ark. <clears throat> Now, last time we talked about Enoch, a man who walked so closely with God, one day he just walked with him to heaven. That was amazing. Well, while Enoch walked with God, most of Adam's children and grandchildren did not. They walked by themselves and forgot all about him. They became selfish and greedy. They would argue and they were mean. They began to fight among themselves and kill each other even, just as Cain and Abel did, had killed Abel. It's hard to understand how things could have got so terrible in such a short period of time after creation. But we can even see that today with both adults and children. Even sometimes when children are in church, they can be disobedient and not doing what they're supposed to do. Maybe they're being loud or running and they should be, um, you know, just being calm. So, and sometimes we just see people being mean to each other say bad things to each other or hit each other sometimes even worse well that's the way it was back in the early days of this world as people drifted farther and farther from god they drifted farther and farther towards sin satan who in the form of a serpent had deceived that means tricked Adam and Eve, he was really glad about all this. He had planned to spoil God's plan for a happy, beautiful world. And I'm afraid it was working. The best way to do this, he thought, would be to lead as many of Adam's children to disobey God and do all sorts of things that were displeasing to him. So he began to tempt them in many ways, and all who were not living close to God fell for his deceptions and lies. Adam and Eve had learned the cost of sin, and they tried to tell their family, but people weren't interested. Their children and their neighbors, their grandchildren, they would tease them and say, oh, you're too old-fashioned. And you just make up too many rules. Adam lived to see his once beautiful and peaceful world now was inhabited by lots and lots of sinful people. Just before he died, he heard Enoch, the man who walked with God, rebuke the ungodly deeds, things that they were doing, and the complainers and the gripers, the people that were walking after their own lusts. That was about 900 years after creation. Might sound like a long time to you, but it's not very long, really. Not for creation. 500 years later, things had gotten even worse. By this time, there was fighting and arguing everywhere. Nobody's life was safe. The Bible said the world was filled with violence. Oh, that is so sad. God had done so much to make the world a place of beauty and peace and joy. And now Satan had almost ruled it. Oh, how sorry God must have been. In fact, it says in this Bible 
when God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that everything he imagined of his thoughts and his heart were only evil all the time. And this repented the Lord. That repent means to turn away. That he had made man on earth and it grieved him in his heart. It made him so sad. And he wished he hadn't made man. With awful sadness, God said to himself, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the birds of the air. For it repineth me that I made them. It makes me very sad. Conditions must have been terrible indeed for God to say that. How it must have hurt him to think about destroying all of his creatures and the beautiful things he had made only a little time before. Yet, even now, his heart, full of never-ending love, held back on carrying the dreadful judgment, even though it was necessary. Perhaps there were some that would still turn back to him if they were given one more chance. Even if there was just a few, even two or three, God would be so glad. He would gladly wait. But he said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. He's not always going to put up with it. He said, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty. So now, instead of living to be like nine hundred years, people would only live to be a hundred and twenty years. In other words, he wouldn't wait that long hundred, he would wait that long hundred and twenty years to see whether the person would listen to him and would come to repentance. But now, if such a call were to given, be given, somebody must be found to give it. But who? Most of Adam's children were following the ways of Satan. Who could be trusted with such an important job? Was there anyone left in this whole world? Who would speak for God? His last message to a doomed people? Do you think he can find anybody that will tell them that they need to turn to God again? And he wants them to be saved? Well, we'll find out more about that tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. I'm glad that God is patient. He's patient with us now, too. Sometimes we do a lot of things that are wrong. And when we do, he's patient with us. And he waits. And he wants us to learn to do right. And when we do right, he's so glad. He knows we have to learn. Well, I just want to say I love you. I really do. But even more importantly, God loves you. And he always will. Well, good night. I'll be reading to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.